Our feet are constantly under stress. It's no wonder that 80% of us will have some sort of problem with our feet at some time or another. Many things affect the condition of our feet. Activity level, occupation, other health conditions, and perhaps most importantly, shoes. Many of the problems that arise in the foot are directly related to shoes. So it is very important to choose shoes that are good for your feet. The foot is an incredibly complex mechanism. Over the next few minutes, I will try to highlight the structures that relate to conditions and surgical procedures of the foot. The important structures of the foot can be divided into several categories. These include bones and joints, ligaments and tendons, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. The ankle joint is sometimes referred to as a mortise and tenon joint. The two bones of the lower leg, the large tibia and the smaller fibula, come together at the ankle joint to form a structure known as a mortise. One of the larger bones of the foot, the talus, forms the tenon of the ankle joint by fitting into the mortise formed by the tibia and fibula. The mortise and tenon structure is well known to carpenters and craftsmen who use this joint in the construction of everything from furniture to large buildings. The arrangement is very stable. The two bones that make up the back part of the foot, sometimes referred to as the hind foot, are the talus and the calcaneus or heel bone. The talus is connected to the calcaneus at the subtalar joint. The ankle joint allows the foot to bend up and down. The subtalar joint allows the foot to rock from side to side. The hind foot is connected to a set of five tarsal bones that work together as a group. These bones are unique in the way they fit together. There are multiple joints between the tarsal bones. When the foot is twisted in one direction by the muscles of the foot and leg, these bones lock together and form a very rigid structure. When they are twisted in the opposite direction, they become unlocked and allow the foot to conform to whatever surface the foot is contacting. The tarsal bones are connected to five long bones of the foot, called the metatarsals. The connections between the tarsal bones and the metatarsal bones are fairly rigid and not much movement occurs at the joints. Finally, there are the bones of the toes, the phalanges. The great toe, like the thumb, has only two phalanges. Each of the other four toes has three phalanges. The joints between each phalange are called the interphalangeal or IP joints. There is not a great deal of motion in the IP joints. The joint between the metatarsal and the first phalanx is called the metatarsophalangeal or MTP joint. Together, all of the MTP joints form the ball of the foot and movement in these joints is very important for a normal walking pattern. The big toe, or hallux, is the most important toe for walking, and the first MTP joint is a common area for problems in the foot. Ligaments are the soft tissues that attach bones to bones. Tendons are soft tissue structures that attach muscles to bones. Both of these structures are made up of small fibers of a material called collagen. The collagen fibers are bundled together to form a rope-like structure. Ligaments and tendons come in many different sizes, and like rope, are made up of many smaller fibers. The thicker the ligament, or the tendon, the stronger the ligament, or tendon is. The large Achilles tendon is the most important tendon for walking, running, and jumping. It attaches the calf muscles to the heel bone to allow us to raise up on our toes. The posterior tibial tendon attaches one of the smaller muscles of the calf to the underside of the foot. This tendon helps support the arch and allows us to turn the foot inward. The anterior tibial tendon allows us to raise the foot. Two tendons run behind the outer bump of the ankle, called the lateral malleolus, and help turn the foot outward. There are a set of tendons that bend the toes down or flex the toes and a set of tendons that straighten or extend the toes. The tendons that flex the toes are called the flexor tendons. There are two flexor tendons on the undersurface of each toe. 
The tendons that extend the toes are called the extensor tendons. There are two extensor tendons on the top surface of each toe. Many small ligaments hold the bones of the foot together. Most of these ligaments form part of the joint capsule around each of the joints of the foot. A joint capsule is a watertight sac that forms around all joints. It is made up of the ligaments around the joint and the soft tissues between the ligaments that fill in the gaps and form the watertight sac. Most of the motion in the foot is caused by the stronger muscles in the lower leg whose tendons connect in the foot. Contraction of the muscles in the leg is the main way that we move our feet to stand, walk, run, and jump. There are numerous small muscles in the foot. While these muscles are not nearly as important as the small muscles in the hand, they do affect the way that the toes work. Damage to some of these muscles can cause problems in the foot. Most of the muscles of the foot are arranged in layers on the sole of the foot or the plantar surface. There they connect to and move the toes as well as provide padding underneath the sole of the foot. The main nerve to the foot the tibial nerve enters the sole of the foot by running behind the inside bump on the ankle or the medial malleolus. This nerve supplies sensation to the toes and sole of the foot and controls the muscles of the sole of the foot. Several other nerves run into the foot on the outside of the foot and down the top of the foot. These nerves primarily provide sensation to different areas on the top and outside edge of the foot. The main blood supply to the foot, the posterior tibial artery, runs right beside the nerve of the same name. This artery travels into the sole of the foot where it forms an arch just behind the ball of the foot. A second artery, the dorsalis pedis, runs down the top of the foot. You can feel your pulse where this artery runs in the middle of the top of the foot. As you can see, the anatomy of the foot is very complex. When everything works together, the foot functions correctly and allows us to walk without pain. But when one part becomes damaged, it can affect the balance of the entire foot. Because we rely on our feet to carry our entire weight and walk across all types of surfaces, it is easy to see why a stable, painless foot is so important to our daily lives.